So I'll mark this method with add transactional annotation, with read-only attribute set to true. Notice here that there are two annotations, one from Java and other from Spring. I'm using the one from Spring. Going back to the integration test. Now I should be able to run the integration test without any issues. There we have it, I've got the first integration test passing. Let's take a look at the console. Because I've called and do print, the request and response should be printed in the log. So here's the request, the HTTP method, the request URI, no headers or body. And then here's the response. The status code is 200 as expected in the test. And the body is an empty list because there are no comments in the database. Now I'm going to write another test to check whether this API will return the requested resource, which is a list of comments. For this, I need to have some data in the database. The cool thing about Spring Boot is that we don't have to worry about database configuration for our testing. Because we added the H2 dependency at the beginning, it configures an in-memory database for us already for our testing purposes. All I have to do now is to preload it with my test data. There are a few ways to do this. You could inject the repository into the test class and save values directly through that. Use SQL or SQL group annotations to execute a set of SQL statements. These annotations can be used on both class and method levels. You could also create a script file in SRC integration test resources folder and add all the insert statements there. It will be executed during application loading. I use a combination of the last two options. Before starting with the script file, let's take a look at the comment entity. I want the ID to be auto-generated, so I'll add that annotation. Then the comment message field is missing here, so let me add that as well. Now there should be a no argument constructor in order for this to be instantiated by the framework. So let's add that now. All set. Now I can add the script file. I'll create a new source folder in SRC integration test called resources. And in that, I'll create a file named testdata.sql. So now I can add some records to the database using this file. Let me add a few insert statements here. If I had named this file import.sql, it will be picked up by Hibernate automatically to preload the database. But I haven't done that because I want more control over the test data. So I'll be using the annotations to load the script. Now on to the next test. What are we testing here? In this test, I want to make sure that I get all the elements of the comment. That is the ID, the post ID and the comment text. So how do I do that? How do I assert or verify that I'm getting all these values in the response body? For this, I'm going to be using JSON path. JSON path makes it possible to traverse a JSON document, just like XPath does for an XML document. So here is the documentation at GitHub. You can find a lot of good examples here. Let's get on with the test. I'll add the SQL annotations first so that we get some data in the database. I'm using SQL group here to group the queries. I want to load the data right before this test. And for that, I'll use the script file that I created and add it in the execution phase before test method. 
and then I also want to clean up after the test. For that, I'll simply use a delete statement in the after test method execution phase. I have copied this line from the previous test and now I'll just run this so that you can see a proper response with some data. Okay, so here's the response body. I'll just copy this and paste it in a text file and format it so that we can see what we've got here. Okay, now it's time to add the JSON path expressions. First of all, I'm going to confirm that it is an array. So this is how you write that expression. Next, I'm going to fetch the first object of the array and then I'm going to see if the ID has a value of 1. And then the post ID has a value of 1. And finally, the message has the string test comment 1. So let's run the test now. OK, that's passing. So the next test that I want to write is to check whether we return status code 400 for invalid post ID in the request URL. Status is bad request. Let me change the post ID to an invalid one. So now this test is failing. It's returning status code 200 no matter what. To return status code 400, which is the bad request code, all you got to do is to add the response status annotation to the exception class and set the status code that you want to return when that exception is drawn. Okay, now we got it passing. You can see the status code 400 here as well in the response. So one more test I want here is to verify that when there are some records in the database, but there are no records for the post ID in the request URL. The response returns an empty array with status code 200. Most of this is covered in the first test except that there are no records in the database in that case. Is an array? The post ID, um, I'm going to set it to 100. I'll be using the same SQL annotations here as well. No need to change the data as I'm not going to be querying them. I just want some data to be present in the database. And I also want to make sure that it's empty. So length is zero. Great, now I've got one endpoint working end to end. So let's move on to the next one, which is a post.